What we need what is not need more medication, more medication but more education, more education, because the best prescription is knowledge. This is Expose coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria, every Monday on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook simultaneously. And I'm your regular host, Tony Akia. Don't, don't forget, what we need what is we not need more medication, more medication but more education, because the best prescription is knowledge. Hello and welcome to Expose with Tony Akiyami this beautiful Monday evening once again. I'm your regular host. Tony Akiyami is still my name. And this is brought to you courtesy of TSF, the Shepherd's Flock International Church. Our discourse on your water and your health continues today again. So far, we have covered a lot of grounds. We've looked at the need to hydrate. We've looked at different properties of water the functions of water in our body. We've looked at different pollutions and uh, pollutants and contaminants that can contaminate our water. And um, we have looked at how each one of them can contribute to the process of disease in the body. Uh, today, we're going to move on to something very, uh, very special, very interesting, and that is water purification. Now that we know that water can be contaminated, water can be polluted, depending on the source where we got the water from. So when I get my well water, my borehole water, my municipal water, my rain water, or wherever I get my water from, and I don't even know what is inside that water, how do I go about purifying that water before I start consuming the water, either by drinking directly or by using it in my kitchen to cook? So water purification. But before I proceed, I want to put on my blue light blocking glasses again. I spoke about this so many episodes ago on Expose with Tony Akiyami, the need to block blue light, particularly from our devices, our screens, our telephone screens, our TV screens, our iPads, our laptops, because blue light impact on our health. We are not talking blue light today. I just decided to chip it in as a reminder. So this is my blue light blocking glasses, which I'm going to wear because of the studio lights that are blaring up, blasting on my face. All right, good. Then we proceed from there on water purification. Now, water purification becomes necessary because of the various forms of impurities and contaminants that we have discussed that are found in the various forms of water available to us today. I think I have shared this story before. When I moved into my house, I took a sample of the water from the borehole in my house because we sank a borehole there and that is where our water supply comes from in my house, a borehole. So I took a sample of the water from my borehole and I sent it to the laboratory for analysis to look for uh, chemicals, look for dissolved inorganic minerals, look for microbes, whatever can be found in that water. I wanted to know what is in the water from the ground in my house, my borehole. If you have a well in your house, you also need to do the same. Analyze it so you know. Now, when they did the analysis for me in the laboratory, of the Lagos State Water Corporation in Lagos, Nigeria, and the result came back. Wow, what I found in that water, I thank God I took that step. Otherwise, if we just started drinking that water or cooking with that water, that water was too high in iron, inorganic iron, too high that we could have been drinking and having iron overload. And many people don't know that when you have too much iron in your body, it can actually be toxic to your liver. It can damage your liver on the long run. Many people are not aware of that. I'll share another story with you, a real-life situation, before I go on to talk about water purification. Now, this was a couple. They, they had a daughter. I mean, they had, I think, three children. 
Now, one of the children, a daughter, was always falling sick, always becoming ill. And they had visited the hospital over and over and over again. They've seen the pediatrician over and over and over again here in Nigeria. And the pediatrician has always diagnosed an infection, an infection, an infection, either upper respiratory infection or some form of infection. And they have been prescribing antibiotics after antibiotics after antibiotics. And this girl would take the antibiotics and get well. And in a couple of weeks, the girl would come down ill again. And it was ongoing and ongoing. And it became so, you know, became, the parents became very worried. And they were concerned for the child. How could this child just be falling sick like that? Okay. And so, being a pastor, they decided to say, Pastor, it looks like this is a spiritual matter. Please pray for our daughter that God will heal her of this spiritual attack and deliver her completely so she could be well. Of course, as a pastor, I began to pray for her. I laid my hands on her. I prayed with her. And as I was praying for her, I sensed in me that there could be something that we needed to get at to be able to resolve this particular situation. So I just interviewed the parents about the sources of their water. What kind of water do you drink? What kind of water do you use to cook? What kind of water do you use to bathe? And all of those things. And they told me. And I found out that they actually had a well in their compound. And that was where they fetched water from. They bathe with the water. They cook with the water. And maybe they just boil the water to drink or they buy bottled water to drink. Something like that. So after that, I just simply, you know, told them, please, can you get a sample of the water in your well, in your compound, and send it to the lab for analysis. And they did. They got the water, they sent it to the lab, the water was analyzed. By the time the result came back, ladies and gentlemen, we found all kinds of microbes, E. coli, was it salmonella, all kinds of things. Microbes, microorganisms, bacteria, in that water. And you know children, when children are bathing, water enters into their mouth, into their eyes, into their nostrils. Some of them will even drink the water. I mean, young children. So this was the kind of water they had in their well. And so when I saw that, I said, ah, this is where this girl is always getting infections from. And so I also told them to do a second thing for me. I wanted them to measure the distance between that their well in their compound and where their septic tank, their soak away, was situated in their compound. And the proximity of the septic tank to the well was so close, was so close that I didn't have any doubt in my mind that somehow water from the septic tank was seeping into the well. And that was why the well was constantly contaminated. And that was the water they was using, they were using in the house. And so I told them, don't, it's either you, you relocate from that house into another house, but if you want to stay in that house, then don't ever use that water to bathe this child or to cook in your kitchen or anything of sort. Make sure you get another source of water to be used in your kitchen or to, to bathe in your bathroom, something like that. Now, if uh, they could afford it, another option would have been to buy water purification devices to purify their water before usage. That way, they could keep the girl out of coming in contact with that contaminated water. And they took my advice. They did a few things as I advised them to do. And that was the end of the girl's uh, dilemma. The palava ended. The girl got well. The girl was never sick again. And the girl started gaining weight and becoming stronger of course, I also advised them on how to boost the immunity of the girl because, of course, she was not the only one coming in contact with the water. Others were too, but others were not coming down with illness. He, she was the only one falling sick, which also points to the fact that her immunity was compromised. So we had to build up her immunity, and then we had to clean up their water. And that was the end of story. This girl is a healthy young girl right now. I still saw her last year, 2023. And she's looking good to the glory of God. She has grown taller. She's grown bigger, stronger, and fitter to the glory of God. Now, talking about water purification, 
there are various methods of water purification out there. We're going to examine just a few of them, okay? Now, these are called water purification methods. They include, but they are not limited to the following. You can boil your water. And I've mentioned that before. You can filter your water. That's the second method. And then some people do chlorination of their water to kill germs. That's another method of water purification, as they call it out there, even though I call it water contamination. Because once you add chlorine to your water, as far as I am concerned, you've contaminated it. All right? The fourth one is steam distillation. Steam distillation. And the fourth one is reverse osmosis. R-O. Reverse, as you put your car in reverse. Okay? Reverse osmosis. And the next one is ozonization. And another one, another method is deionization. And I want us to take them in turn and look at the merits and demerits of each purification method. Now, the age-old purification method that most of us are familiar with and used to and probably have deployed at one time or the other is boiling our water. Now, I grew up in a village where we fetched water from streams. And sometimes you never can tell what is being washed, you know, into the stream from wherever. So when we fetched our water from the streams, the ones we, used, we wanted to drink, we would usually boil the water and kill all the microbes and all the parasites and whatever was in the water in the village setting. I mean, I live in a developing country where we don't have municipal water available to everybody everywhere except those who are living in the city. Even in the cities, not every municipal water supply is working well. We thank God things are looking up and we are making progress in that direction by the grace of God. But when I was growing up, one of the ways we treated our water or purified our water was to boil our water. At least, that would kill the germs and the parasites in the water. Now, except for some volatile gases that may escape during boiling, when the water is boiling, usually no impurity is really removed from the water when we boil the water. Okay, you are not removing any impurity. All you are doing is you are killing the microbes in the water. But there are some volatile gases that once the water reaches the boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius, the volatile gases will start, you know, escaping. So that may be the only thing that you are able to get rid of from the water. But as simplistic and primitive as boiling your water may look like, for me, it is still highly, highly preferable to chlorination. Rather than chlorinate your water, rather than add chlorine to your water, I strongly suggest that you simply boil it. I mean, I cracked a joke the other time of what somebody said, that when your water is bubbling with microbes and parasites, you know, germs, they may not be visible to your naked eyes, but they are there. They are, your water is like an aquarium of some sort. But once you boil the water and you kill all of them off, that is a kind of a mortuary of some sort. Now they have dead germs in there. Okay? Now, the idea of boiling to kill germs is the whole idea of what is known today globally as pasteurization. Pasteurization, which was, a, 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 you know, a thought, an idea that was pushed forward by the scientist Louis Pasteur, a French scientist, Louis Pasteur. He was the one that came forward with the idea of boil it to kill the germs inside. Whether it is milk, boil it and kill it before, kill the germs before you start selling to people. Whether it is fruit juice in cartons that they sell in supermarkets, boil it and kill the germs before you put them in packets or in packages to sell in the supermarket. So that process of boiling or heating, heat it up, elevate the temperature so that all the germs will be dead before you send it to people. That whole process of boiling to kill germs is now called pasteurization, named after the scientist who, who pushed that idea, Louis Pasteur. All right? For me, killing the germs in your water is a better option than, I mean, by through boiling, is a better option than adding the chemical chlorine to the water 
to kill the germs because they both achieve the same end. But the better option for the boiling is that it doesn't bring any chemical into the water. It's just temperature. The temperature of the water is raised. The germs are dead. And now you have a mortuary of water. And then you can drink the dead germs. They're not going to infect you. Okay? Right. Now, the second method for purifying our water is filtration. To filter the water. Filter your water. Now, filtering only removes large particles of solid matter, depending on the number, the, the size of the micron on the filter that you're using. It doesn't, filtering normally doesn't remove microbes, usually doesn't remove nanoparticles, and sometimes doesn't remove minerals that have dissolved in the water. Okay? But it is still better to filter our water than to do nothing. But at least you are removing something. But nowadays, there are some filters that, you know, the holes are so tiny that they can remove over 90% of the impurities in your water. All right? And sometimes they also cascade the filters. Stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4. So you have stage 1 filtration, stage 2 filtration, stage 3 filtration, stage 4 filtration. And by the time it is filtered in four stages, it becomes very, very uh, pure to a very large extent. Now, there are different ways to filter water. We'll talk about that when we come back after this short break. Don't go away. I'll be back very shortly. <laughs> Welcome back. This is still Expose with Tony Akiyami, brought to you by TSF, the Shepherd's Flock International Church. And I'm your regular host, Tony Akiyami is my name. What we need, like we normally say, is not more medication, but more education. I told you a story before we went on that break of a little girl that had been given medication upon medication over and over and over again, and the problem kept recurring until we got to the root of the problem and I educated the parents on what to do. And as they began to do that, that was the end of medication. Education can be more powerful than medication. Of course, sometimes we do need medication. I'm not saying don't take medication. That's not the point. What I'm saying is that what we need is not more medication, but more education. I hope you get the balance right there. Okay, so we were talking about water, water purification methods, water purification methods. And we have looked at one method, boil the water. At least that will kill all the living things, all the microorganisms, all the germs, all the infectious agents in the water. And that's a good way uh, to prevent, you know, waterborne diseases that are caused by microbes. All right, the second method we discussed before we went on that break is the method of filtration where you filter your water, all right? And I said that filtration will remove some particles, solid matter, and what have you, but it doesn't remove certain things from your water, okay? But it's still better to filter and, and reduce the amount of contaminants in your water than to leave everything there 100%. And I said there are two ways you can approach your water filtration. One approach is what I call the point of entry filtration. And the second one is point of use filtration. I will explain myself. Now, point of entry. Now, let me use my house as an illustration. Where I live, 
we have a borehole, okay, and then we have the water pumped from the borehole into an overhead tank. Now, before the water goes into the overhead tank, we first of all pour, uh, pump it into a tank that is on the ground, you know, and as it enters, as the water is coming from the borehole to enter into the tank, we install filters, you know, different stages of filters to filter the water. Uh, and we change the filters from time to time as the need arises. And so the water from the borehole is filtered through that filter before it gets into the ground tank. And then from that one tank again, we take it through another stage of filtration, carbon filtration, you know, that has activated carbon, activated charcoal in that f filter. And so the water passes through that tank with activated charcoal and it is filtered a second stage into another tank on the ground still. And then from that second tank, it is now lifted with another pumping machine into the overhead tank. So that means three stages of filtration. And it is from that overhead tank that water now begins to flow into the building. So we have filtered the water before it entered the building. That is point of entry filtration. Before it begins to circulate around the pipes in the building. All right. Now, so that water gets into the pipes in the building. It goes into the kitchen. It goes into the toilet and bathroom. It goes into the laundry room. Everywhere that we have water, uh, um, you know, utensils installed, you know, um, wash hand basins or whatever, water flows there. Okay. Now, the one in the kitchen is the one we're going to be using for washing the dishes, for cooking and all of that, and drinking. The one that goes into the laundry is used to wash clothes. The one that goes to the bathroom, we use it to shower, to flush the toilet and what have you. But so we only need to do point of entry filtration to service the laundry room, to service the bathroom, to service the toilet. All right. Now, by the one that comes into the kitchen, we do another kind of filtration there. It's called point of use filtration or point of use purification. So we do further purification before we take the water out of the faucet in the kitchen to drink or to cook because that one is going into our body directly. So we have to make sure we do another round of purification. Now, there are different ways you can do point of use purification. You can use filtration method, something like you know, installing another round of filters there, or you can use reverse osmosis method, which we are going to be talking about, or you can use steam distillation method, which we are going to be talking about. Different kinds of methods can be used to purify your water at the point of use. That's called point of use purification. All right. So that is uh, by way of explanation. I just gave you that bonus, okay, free of charge. You don't have to pay for it. Now let's move on to the third way that people normally purify their water, which I personally don't subscribe to, and that is chlorination. Chlorination. Adding chlorine to disinfect your water. I've spoken about that in a previous episode. You see, when we boil our water, at least we kill the germs in the water, except for some volatile gases that may escape you know, during boiling. Like I said, no impurity is really removed from the water when we boil it. And so boiling achieves the same thing as chlorination because when you add chlorination, no impurity is removed. When you add chlorine, no impurity is removed from the water. All it does is also to kill the microbes or the germs in the water, which I can as well kill by boiling the water without adding any chemical to my water. Okay? Now, so that is chlorination as a way of water purification, so to speak which I do not subscribe to and I do not recommend. Uh, after all, we have other methods we can use to purify our water, so why be tied down to one that is, uh, you know, very, very um, debatable, one that is controversial, one that not every scientist agree upon? Okay, now, the fourth way of water purification is steam distillation. Now, steam distillation is arguably, mark my word, arguably, the best method of water purification. Not everybody agrees. Now, I'll tell you why I think it could be. Now, whereas other methods attempt to remove impurities from water, 
Distillation, on the other hand, removes water from impurities. And I want you to mark that. Other methods of water purification that we have discussed and that we are yet going to discuss, every method of water purification attempts to remove impurities from water. But when it comes to steam distillation, it removes water from impurities. It leaves impurities behind and the water is lifted to go away and leave impurities behind. But in other methods, you are trying to take impurity out of water. When you are filtering, for example, you are trying to remove, use the filter to capture impurities and take it out of the water. Okay? When you do reverse osmosis, the same thing. You are trying to capture impurities and remove it out of the water. But when you do steam distillation, you are taking the water out of the impurity. Now, distilled water is obtained by heating water, turn it, turning it into a steam or vapor so that all the impurities are left behind. Now, the resulting vapor is then condensed back to water and filtered again through carbon filters that typically contain activated charcoal to remove any other gaseous substance that may have evaporated with the water. Now, this produces pure, colorless, odorless, and tasteless water that is 99.99% pure. Of course, the downside of steam distillation is that there will be no mineral left in the water. Everything has been left behind, both the bad and the good. Because you boil the water, the water, the water evaporates and becomes vapor or steam. And then there is a condenser at the top of the chamber, condensing chamber at the top of the purifier, and the steam that is rising, the water that is leaving, and leaving impurity behind, that steam is now condensed back to water and then passed through uh, activated charcoal filtration to remove any odor that may have arisen with the water, remove any coloration that may have arisen with the water. So it deodorizes and decolorizes through the activated charcoal filt uh, filtration system. That is steam distillation. Now, if you use the steam distillation method to purify your water, you will need to also remineralize the water. Otherwise, the pH will be very high. It will be very acidic. The pH will be low, I meant to say, and it will be highly acidic. Because when you have pH below 7, that's acidic. pH above 7, that's alkaline. The pH will be very, very low, and the, it, the acidity will be very, very high. And one of the devices used for purifying water that way is the water-wise water purifier, which my wife and I have been using for upwards of two decades in our house. We've been using this water purifier for about 20 years now, and it's been serving us so well. Of course, that's not the only one. We have the point of entry, which I described below. We now use this one in the kitchen as a point of use kind of purification. All right? Now, let me talk a bit about alkaline and structured water so that we will understand the perspective of mineralization and alkalization. And then we'll move on to other methods. Now, after purifying your water through steam distillation, like I said, it might be necessary to also remineralize and restructure your water. And so how do you remineralize? There are different ways to do that. There is a product that is known as Dr. Willard's water. Willard is W-I-L-L-A-R-D. Dr. Willard's water. You can find it on many sites. You can buy it online. It's a good product to add minerals to your steam distilled water. So after distilling the water, you just put a few drops into the water and it adds the minerals back into your water. Once the mineral gets into the water, it elevates the pH of the water and it makes the water become alkaline and mineralized. All right? And then uh, once the minerals are added and your water becomes alkaline, becomes mineralized, then it's no longer acidic, it's no longer harsh on the system. Of course, there are some uses. You can also put even the one you have not mineralized that you can put them to use for. Like when you, use steam, uh, you do steam distillation to produce distilled water, it can actually be helpful to be taken for a short period of time for those who are trying to dissolve kidney stones, for example, because it has a high affinity for minerals because of its acidic nature. So it can quickly dissolve kidney stones that are made of calcium, inorganic calcium compounds. It can make it to you know, be dissolved and pass out very quickly. Now, another product that can help to add minerals to steam distilled water and to restructure the water is called uh, a water revitalizer. I'm sure they will show you the images 
of this particular product, the water wise water distiller and the water revitalizer. The water revitalizer, uh, after you distill your water, you have purified it, the water has been removed from impurities, 99.99% pure, but no minerals inside, highly acidic. You now pour it into the duet water revitalizer. It has a mineral basket at the base, and you can set the timer nine minutes or 18 minutes or 27 minutes. The one that we have in our house can go for as far as 27 minutes. Now, the longer you mineralize, the higher the pH of the water. It just swells the water and releases minerals into the water to mineralize the water, to elevate the pH of the water, to, to make it alkaline, and to also, you know, restructure the, the molecules of the water into the crystalline structure that makes it become wet water, as we say, and makes it more easily for your body to absorb the water and really hydrate your cells in your body. Okay? That's the revitalizer. Now, I'm going to talk about one more, and then we will cut it off today because I've been signaled that my time is almost up. Okay, we're going to be looking at reverse osmosis as another method of water purification. Now, uh, uh, if they can just show you the image on the screen, it's a little bit complex, but you don't have to worry your head about the mechanism of action, how it works. But as you can see there, it's, it's something that water engineers can install under your kitchen zinc. You just buy it, they install it, and that's it. You don't have to do much. Then the water comes out through a faucet where you dispense the purified water. You can just dispense it from the, from the faucet. In Nigeria, we call it the tap. You just open the faucet or you open the tap, and the water flows, okay? And you drink it straight like that from the faucet because it's gone through a process underneath your kitchen sink uh, that has been purified. That's a standard reverse osmosis system. And now there are devices that can help to achieve that same system without necessarily installing them under your kitchen zinc. You can actually have them as a tabletop or desktop devices. And one of them, one of those products that uses the reverse osmosis method to purify your water is the Elkins BioPure Ultra Water Purification Unit. It has a four-stage filtration system to produce clean drinking water, and the filtration is instant. The size of the device is so compact, and no electricity is required. That's the beautiful part of it. I've got one at home, okay? No electricity is required. Very compact, very beautiful, very aesthetically designed, and you just install it, and you can easily install it by yourself. Do it yourself, DIY. It's not complicated at all. You don't need a water engineer to come and put that together for you. That's what I love about this reverse osmosis product, the Elkins BioPure Ultra Water Purification Unit. Now, that is the smaller one. They also have a bigger one, which I call the executive one, <laughs> okay? The PhD one, which is the Elkins Hydromy Water Purification Unit, all right? It's another reverse osmosis product. It uses the reverse osmosis method in water purification. Now, the Hydromy produces over 900 parts per billion PPB per liter of dissolved hydrogen concentration in the water. They claim that it is the first water purifier that instantly produces high concentration and high purity hydrogen by reverse osmosis. It also features, you know, Elkins' renowned five-stage reverse osmosis purification system that removes virtually all kinds of contaminants. That is the hydromy. Again, the image will be shown to you on the, screen, on the screen there. Now, the good thing about the hydromy is that it not only purifies your water, it also puts hydrogen into your water. I mean, uh, I think it was in 2023, if I'm not mistaken, that I did a series on uh, therapeutic gases or medical gases, you know, oxygen, I, I talked about hydrogen, I talked about ozone, and what have you. Those are gases that have medical application that can actually serve for therapeutic purposes, prophylactic purposes, and what have you. And hydrogen happens to be one of those gases that can be used for medical application, for therapeutic purposes, to help people to heal from diseases. And so this hydromy 
water purifying device purifies your water and also enriches the water with hydrogen gas. Okay? And the hydrogen water, the water that comes out of it when you dispense the water, is not just purified water. It's called hydrogen water. And that water provides antioxidant benefits to neutralize free radicals. It has anti-aging benefits. It has anti-inflammatory benefits to so reduce inflammation in the body. It has anti-allergy benefits. It also uh, promotes detoxification to the cellular level in the body. And then it also actually increases cell hydration. Hydrogen water hydrates your body much more than just regular water. And then it also helps to enhance your body's immunity and many other benefits that you get from hydrogen water. Now, I got a small hydrogen bottle that I used to use in the past where I just pour you know, water into the hydrogen bottle. It's like a water bottle and it has a charger. You can charge the battery. It has a battery just like you're charging your phone. And once you've, it's fully charged, you pour water inside, you press a button. If you press the button, it will put hydrogen in your water for about three minutes. If you press it about twice, it can you know, go on for about 10 minutes and generate hydrogen gas into your water so you have hydrogen water. And then you can drink from the water bottle. But this particular device I'm talking about, the uh, Hydromi water purifier, actually is like um, a water dispenser that you install in your house. It's not something you move about. And um, it's worth any amount of investment that you can put into it as a family. Okay? I encourage all the families that can afford it to get one uh, and install it in their houses. And when you have, you have, once you have one in your house, you just go there, dispense water. The water is purified. The water is rich in hydrogen. And so you have an antioxidant water, anti-aging water, anti-inflammatory water, anti-allergy water, water to enhance detoxification, to improve hydration, to boost immunity, and all the attendant benefits that are derivable. Now, this is one device that uses the reverse osmosis method. Now, uh, if I am obliged, I actually want to be, I, I, will, I will invite the, the, the company that actually uh, sells this device in Nigeria uh, to expose, to interview them, uh, if they will oblige me, and I will let them come and speak more about this product because I got really fascinated as I started studying it and reading more about the device. Now, there's another one that is also very good that all of us can invest in, and if I get the opportunity also, I would like to invite one of those who are selling that product and also interview them to shed more light on this device. And that one is the Kangen machine. I heard about Kangen machine maybe about 17, 18 years ago when I went to the UK and somebody mentioned it to me and introduced it to me. I drank the Kangen water about 17, 18 years ago. And, you know, in Nigeria today, Kangen is so available all over the place that it also has its own uh, properties and benefits. We will talk about that when the time comes. I'm just mentioning them right now. But I will let those who know better than I do concerning the Hydromi uh, water purifier and the Kangen machine to come and speak about them. But those ones could cost maybe an arm and a leg for you to own. If you can't afford that, you can begin to believe God to have that, either the Hydromi or the Kangen. But if you can't afford that one, I would suggest that you start with the uh, BioPure Ultra, Elkins BioPure Ultra. That one doesn't cost as much. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, please don't quote me anywhere because, you know, prices fluctuate and change uh, from time to time because of the Naira to dollar exchange rate. Okay, but the last time I checked, the price was still uh, hovering a little below 200,000 Naira. And I think it's something that every family can walk towards to have in Nigeria, at least as a starting point, to purify the water in your kitchen at the point of use so that you have some clean water to drink and to cook. Then later you can believe God to graduate to the millions where you can now buy the Hydromi or the Kangen and install and that is it. Once you have that one, you have dealt with the water issue in your family, in your home. This is how far we can go today on Expose with Tony Akiyemi. And I want to appreciate you and thank you for always spending your beautiful Monday evening with me every week, 8 p.m. West African time. 
I hope this has been a blessing to you. We are not done with water yet. We are still going to continue with a lot about water in subsequent episodes because there are still so many things we need to talk about. Uh, we'll talk about various other, uh, maybe I should use natural, inexpensive method to you know, purify water and alkalize water and mineralize water. I'll be talking about that maybe in the next episode by the special grace of God. And then we'll look at the various purification methods and compare and contrast. Then we move on to the containers that we use to store our water and see the effect that they do have and how to minimize exposure to all of those things that can contaminate our water, particularly from the containers as well as the conduit pipes that we used to. That, that will be dealt with in the next episode. Thank you once again. Have a very good day.